All right, welcome back, everybody. So uh, for everybody playing along at home, this is the warm-up. Um, my students in class, say hi, everybody. Hi. Hola. Hello. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trilingual class today. Exactly. Um, the, they're finishing up the warm-up, but I did want to talk through um, the, the next couple days ahead. Um, so it's, it's kind of odd. We really only had one new section to learn past the quiz. You know, we took our quiz on Wednesday. Yesterday, we learned section 2-5. And that's it for chapter 2. There is another section in chapter 2 that we're not going to do. It's absolute value inequalities. We did absolute value equations. Absolute value inequalities is not something that's technically within our standards. Um, I've never seen it on a uh, um, like an end-of-course test, an OST test. So um, I think we're just going to pass by that. So um, we're going to get into chapter three starting next week. That means we need to take our chapter two test. So what we're going to do today is go through this warm up, go through the homework, and then with the remaining time, I'm going to give you your chapter two practice test. Chapter two practice test. I know we just took a quiz. I know. But we really only learned one new section and really it wasn't too difficult anyway. And so today we're going to go through or sorry, we're going to have time to work on the practice test. Monday in class, we're going to go over that practice test, and I'm going to be handing back all the quizzes, and we'll go over the quizzes as well. Then on uh, Tuesday, we will be taking our test over Chapter 2. Okay. Now, let me warn you. On Tuesday's test, that, you know, think about it this way. Tuesday, next week, um, we really only have, after next week, we really only have one more week of the first nine weeks. That's really it. Okay? We have our test next Tuesday, the 5th. The 15th is the end of the grading period. So we really only have one and a half more weeks out of the first nine weeks past the end of Chapter 2. That means we may get one more quiz in, but that's it. Okay? So that means... For any of you that are struggling, for any of you that need a grade boost, next week's test is, is pretty much it. That's, that's, that's like your last opportunity, your last big chance. There might be one more summative grade to go in the grade book. There might be a couple more formative grades to go in the grade book. That's pretty much it for the first nine weeks. Okay. So next Tuesday's test is kind of like your last chance to do anything with your grade, anything drastic with your grade. Okay. Um. So that means take it, take, you know, take the opportunity. Um, your next week's test, chapter two test, is going to be very similar to the chapter one test, where I will be going over the practice test, and pretty much the practice test is very similar to the real test. I will go through all of the answers, and if you understand what you're doing on your practice test, it'll be fine for the real test. Um, our similar points, I believe it's like 78 points, something like that. Um, so, and our, our chapter one test was 80 points, so it's very similar. Very, very similar. Um, but again, the only difference from what you did on your quiz that you did this past Wednesday and your test that you're going to take next Tuesday is just Section 2.5, just this compound inequality stuff that you see on the board right now. That's it. That's the only difference. Okay, Your quiz looks very similar to your test with a couple exceptions. Using compound inequalities, and we ask a few different questions as well that you'll see on the practice test. So let me answer a couple of questions. Can can we just start by going over number nine? Yeah. Let's just start by going over number nine because I know I know that was kind of giving some people some fits here. So let's start by going over number no way. See? Bueno? Uh, I do German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah. All right. Um, now here's the way I would do this problem. Now, everybody look up here. Could I subtract the 3, figure out whatever that fraction is, and then take 1 half R and then divide by 1 half over to the other side? Yes. Totally. That would be completely fine. You guys have your calculators. You know how to work them. You can do it that way. Here's the way I am going to do this. Do you remember back when we were solving equations and I did that thing where I multiplied the entire equation by the LCD? <laughs> well, then let's refresh it. Um, 
Take a look here at these fractions. What's my LCD of these fractions? What's my common denominator that I would use for these fractions? Four. Four. I could use eight. Eight wouldn't, wouldn't steer me wrong. But four is my LCD, my least common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four and I'm going to multiply it in. So four times one half is two. Four times three is twelve. Four times seven fourths. Now, four times seven fourths, I can put that in my calculator. Four times seven fourths, that's going to get me seven. I'm just going to cancel out my denominator. Now, isn't that a lot easier in equality to solve? Yeah. We subtract 12 to both sides. We get 2r is less than negative 5. And when we divide by 2, r is less than negative 2.5. So there's part of my answer. And now remember, with an or inequality, how do I know that this is an or inequality and not an and inequality? Well, it says the flipping word or. That's it. <laughs> I mean, there's no other, like, there's no other way to see. It says or, like, it, right in the middle there. There, that's how I know it's an or inequality. Do ands say the word and? Yeah. No. They have that linked together piece in there. They, they, they do not, like, in number six and five, those are ands. They do not say the word and. Ors say the word or. All right. What's my LCD out of the second one? This one is eight. This one is eight. So let's multiply eight in. And now, remember that to solve the ors, I'm just solving them separately. Remember, it's like the two for one deal. Like I was talking about in the video. Eight times negative r is negative eight r. Eight times three fourths. Well, think about it. Multiply three times eight is 24. 24 divided by four is six. So three fourths of eight is six. And then if I multiply in here with three eighths, well, that's going to cancel out my denominator, just leaving a three. And now that, in my opinion, is a lot easier to solve. We subtract the not six over to the other side to, to get a negative three. We divide by negative eight. Dividing by the negative flips the symbol greater than or equal to three eighths, which I believe is point three seven five. Okay, now when I go to graph it, um, let me ask you, do ors point out or in? Out. Remember, think ors on a boat. They point outward, right? They point into the water. Ors on a boat point out, so my arrows will also point out. Here's negative 2.5. Here's 0 0.375. Here's a closed dot at 0.375 pointing to the right. There's an open dot at negative 2.5 pointing to the left. They follow the same rules, like the arrows go in the same direction and everything. So that didn't change. That did not change. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions about nine before we move on? In my, I don't think I'm going to give you anything as difficult as number nine in terms of the fraction. It's going to be a lot more straightforward, more whole numbers. Now, was the process the same? Yes, with the exception of the weird, like, multiplying groups through by the LCD. But is the process on graphing and everything else the same? Yes. All right, let's take a look at number seven. Do this. All right, number seven here. Again, this is an or inequality. I see that because it literally says the word or in the middle of this thing. So what does that tell me? That tells me I just solved these two inequalities separately. So I would subtract the 8 from both sides. V is less than negative 5. I would divide by negative 8. Now, I will say this. You know what the most common mistake that I have to take off points for on your quiz? Because I'm, I'm in the process of grading them right now. You know what the most common thing I need to take a point off for is? It's not flipping the symbol. Not flipping the symbol. Like this. Negative, I divide by negative 8. Do I need to flip the symbol? Yeah. That's like the big thing, the big difference between e equalities and inequalities. 
flipping the symbol when you divide or multiply by a negative. People, come on now, you know better. Negative 40 divided by negative 8 is positive 5, so it's greater than 5. Now, the, I, yes, you have to write the word or on the answer blank when it's an or problem. So V is less than negative 5 or greater than positive 5. Now, I put negative 5 here, positive 5 here, open circles on both of them, ors point out. Remember what mathematically that means. That means that either of those two set of criteria must be met. Like, for example, you either need to be less than negative 5 or bigger than positive 5. Remember the whole thing where I was talking about jeans and glasses on the video? If you're wearing jeans or you're wearing glasses, you don't have to meet both of the two criteria to be lumped together, right? Like, if I'm bringing out the hallway, everybody with jeans or glasses, that means, like, Solomon's coming out with me. Even though he's not wearing jeans, he's wearing glasses, right? You don't have to meet both of the two criteria. You just have to meet one of the two criteria. Okay, that's why anything less than negative 5 or greater than positive 5 would be a solution. So like negative 6 would be a solution. Even though it's not bigger than 5, it's still less than negative 5. So it's, it meets one of the two criteria. Other questions? What do we have? Go ahead. Three. Number 3. Is this one of the ones where you had to write? Yeah. The, the at most throws a lot of people off. Okay, M is more than negative 7 and 2 thirds. Okay, that's not too bad. Oops, 7 and 2 thirds. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. 7 and 2 thirds. Or, okay, that tells me that this is an or inequality. Or, at most negative 10. Okay, if it's at most negative 10, it's got to stay less than or equal to negative 10. Okay, there's my inequality. I go to my number line to graph it. Here's negative 10. Here's negative 7 and 2 thirds. Um, open circle on negative 7, 2 thirds, pointing to the right. Closed circle on negative 10, pointing to the left. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, um, I get confused with the or and and. Okay, just remember, like, in terms of the graphing mm -hmm. or what to use. Like crashing. Okay, just remember ors should always point out. Ands should always connect in the middle. That's always going to be our case. Especially when it's uh, written out like that. Yeah, just try to remember that if you see the word or in there, your graph should always look like ors on a boat. Mm -hmm. Always, no matter what. If you see the word and like this, I, I'm not even going to read the rest of the problem. I know it's going to look something like this. Now, I don't know if they're open dots or closed dots, but it should look something like that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And again, you'll see the words or and and in there, like or, and, or. Oh, wait, no. This is the or that I want. Okay. Um, number one, and right here. And. It'll tell you the word that you're going to use in there. Okay. Now, how do I know five and six are and problems? Because they don't have the word or in it. And they're in that like linked together notation. Okay. Refocus, everybody. I see a lot of people dozing off. Come on. Um, take a look here at the warm-up. Everybody should be everybody should have done your warm-up, so we should all have it out looking at it. So I just wanted to solve and graph one of each type. First off, is number one an and or an or? It's an and, because it's in that linked together. I, and obviously, I don't see the word or. So I don't even know what it's going to be, what the solutions are going to be. But I know this, since they're both or equal to's, it's going to look like this. Somehow in the end. I don't know what those points are yet, but it's going to look like this. Take a look at number two. Because I see the word or, I know it's going to look like this. Now, what, it looks like they're both less thans or greater than, so no or equal to's. But I know it's going to end up like that. I don't, I, I don't even know what their solutions are yet, but I know that's the way the graphs are going to end up. Because that's how ands and ors work. Okay, now, when I solve an and, remember that you're just kind of like solving the middle, right? 
you're getting you're getting x alone from the middle. So the first step to get x alone from the middle is to subtract 4. So if I subtract 4 from the middle, i got to subtract 4 from the left and the right, leaving me a 2x in the middle, a 16 on the right, and negative 8 on the left. To get x alone from the middle, again, I divide by 2. And if I divide by 2 from the left, i got to divide by 2 from the right as well, which leaves me with a negative 4 and a positive 8. Okay, that fills in my graph, and I'm done. Take a look at number two. Now, and I, I, I got to be honest, I think ands are a lot more convenient than ors. Why? Because ands, I can solve them at the same time. The same operation solve both inequalities. Like, did the same operation solve both inequalities in number two? No. I, I, I have to subtract eight, and that means nothing for my other inequality. I just have to solve this one. Three x is less than negative nine. I divide by three x is less than negative 3, or, okay, I add 6 to this one, that just leaves me with an x is greater than 8. Okay, 8, negative 3, done. That's it. Did any part of the solving the inequality change from uh, yesterday? No. No parts about solving the inequalities changed. None of that changed. It's all still the same. The only difference is now we're linking two inequalities together by using the word and or or. Remember, or means the one or the other just has to meet one of the two criteria. And means both of the two criteria. Like the whole jeans and glasses thing. Like I think I am the only person in the room that is wearing jeans. Oh, no, I like Nolan's wearing jeans and glasses too. Okay. Me and him are the only ones that fit the two criteria. That's it. That's it. Okay. Even though other people are wearing jeans and other people are wearing glasses, we are the only two that fit both of those criteria. That means it's an and inequality. Okay. All right. Um, let me stop talking here, and I'll get you guys a good amount of time. I'm giving you 16 minutes to start working on your practice test. Now, normally practice tests, I say, you must show all work and answers on a separate sheet of paper. Um, because I want you to graph using the number lines that I'm providing to you, you can do numbers one through six on this paper. You can do numbers one through six on this paper. But everything else, seven through 18, I want you to do on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, go ahead and get to work. Um, let me know if you have any questions I can help you through. Please don't do um, like seven through seven through eighteen. Do not do this on this paper. There's not enough room. Oh, I got to turn the video off. Okay.